Did you see that about John Cleese? He cancelled himself. He cancelled himself. Now, I was a huge fan of John Cleese. I think he's a comedy. Ge- he was a comedy genius. I went to see him live, and I was a little bit disappointed, but I, at least I saw him live. And uh, I, I think because he's actually doing a documentary program about wokeness, that it's all about the advertising. Because like he, he comes from Cambridge, he, he he was at Cambridge. He, he'll go back and talk in in six weeks' time. It's just said, a publicity uh, stunt. Well, they said the the reason he ca- cancelled himself was because they they were going to cancel him. So he said, I'll, ca- "I'll stop myself from going. I want you and you to stop me." No, they weren't going to cancel him. It was the guy did a, an impression of Hitler or talked about it. I think no, I think he did an impression. Why did I do that as an impression of Hitler? What does that mean? Yeah, no, I think the guy did an impression of Hitler and he said, I'm going to cancel my... John Cleese said, I'm going to cancel myself because I did an impression of Hitler as as, as Basil Fawlty. But he's also filming a, a woke documentary, so I just, I don't go... I'm not, he's, a, he's very good at publicising himself, is John I Cleese. I thought he was got invited to... Because it was like... The, the union. The, um, I'm, I'm sure that I, I read it in the news are saying that he was invited and they're going to cancel him. I think I'd like to say, go back to... to um, I just want to say Jim Bowen then. Jim Bowen's dead, isn't he? So, and he, he was all right, actually. <laughs> Jim, Jim Bowen, even though he was part of the old comedians who go, I wouldn't say my mother-in-law, he, he, he was a funny man. He had lovely timing. But he, 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 if I remember, he wasn't very... You didn't tell anything that was controversial. He was just no, like, he, was, it, he was slightly family-orientated, but live he was very blue. Like Bob Monkhouse was extremely blue live, but he was more blue in a sweary way rather than... Saying things that were a little bit too risque, <gasps> but it, you know, like for example, saying you comedian should be allowed to say this a fist social commentary. But going back to Jim Davidson, it's like for me that's not social commentary. But like you said, there are people out there with similar views who do see that as social commentary. Wow. So he's catering for that particular market, and you would say that's wrong, but they're not. That's free speech, then. But I, yeah, I don't. But then, yeah. once you break it, I, I don't know. It's quite, oh, no, it is. Maybe. It is free. It, no, it is free speech. But I, I do think you have to be your own censor, and and then you have to learn how to live with that as best you can. But, but you're right. It is free speech. But Jim Davidson shouldn't. There should be a. But <sighs> is there a law? I, I. This is what always does my head in. There is a law. Is there not a law that you shouldn't, you can't, you mustn't? It's impossible. You shouldn't be racist. Is there a law on racism? Yeah, there is. But then he... he do Where I, do you apply it with, with, with Jim Davidson? Because he's telling jokes, isn't he? Because they're jokes. I'm at, that's his argument, that these are jokes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not inciting a hate crime against anyone. But thing, yeah, but things have changed. This is the beauty of it, isn't it? We are evolving as a species and killing the planet at the same time. But we are evolving as a species, and we, we you know, more people know what's right or what's wrong. Because I was going to say, I had a, a thought. I went to see Freddie Star once, and my mum was horrified, horrified at this joke. She thought it was disgusting, but she wasn't concerned about the racism part of it. It was the sexual side of it that she didn't like. So, it's an Irish joke during the bombings, right? So he said, did you hear about the Irishman who didn't know the difference between, oh, a letter bomb and a French letter? That's what it was. You know what a French letter is, do you? <laughs> of course you don't. It's old. It's old. It's old posh people speak for Johnny. <laughs> like French. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Right. So the joke was, did you hear about the Irishman who didn't know the difference between a French letter and a letter bomb? Blew his cock off. Right. Oh, that was it. It was the cock. It was the word cock my mum was objecting to. Well, you could pick that apart and find so many things wrong with that. <laughs> but cock, I think, is the least offensive. Or am I wrong? I think it's, it, I think that your mum's generation, they were, it, wasn't, it wasn't a generation where they used to seeing or hearing about sex, were they? It was, no. it was very hush-hush, quiet, quiet. Yeah, was yeah wasn't in the room. So, if you're in the room next to them, yeah, yeah, so. 
So to hear it out on the probably TV or a show or on, yeah. you can be like, yeah. But but I think that's that that was the thing because we saw him on TV and he was on ITV a lot and he was you know he wasn't rude on ITV, but I think she was. That's why we went. We went as a family. It was like a family trip to the Alexander Theatre in Birmingham. But I, I remember, remember that joke right. and I remember how upset she was about it. I used to work at this place, and uh, it's going back to over oh, twenty years, over oh, twenty years. And there was a few um, people working there, and they got so excited when Roy Chubby Brown was coming to town. Oh. All right, <laughs> I remember the conversation. And why? Why? We, I heard about him. I heard. I never seen him, but I heard his jokes. And I try. She was. I, try, I said, "Why do you go?" And I was just like, it came across as like that was her humour. That that that's the kind of humour she likes. Yeah. Which makes me feel like, well, what Society. what point does your humour become your opinion? Jesus Christ. This should be That's the heavy, philosophy hour. Oh, go. man, I love that as a question, but I don't even think I'm ready to... <laughs> ask me again. So, you know, at what point does humour become your opinion? Fucking hell, I don't know how to deal with that. I can't I can't see a way through. Because if she goes to see Chubby Brown and she enjoys this the shit that he said. Although I do want to go and see Chubby Brown because I don't understand exactly what's wrong with him. And we should come back to that, but I really want to get my head around opinion. At what point does humour become your opinion? No! Oh, I'm not sure. You can go home. After a day at work, and you could put the telly on and watch Coronation Street, which is completely not a true story, and it gives you something to enjoy, and you think, I'm enjoying that. So you can go watch a comedian, and you say, I'm enjoying that, but it's it's something for me to unwind too. But if it plays to your prejudice and your opinions, you're going to enjoy it more. If, if you have a different look, so if your intelligence is that that's wrong, then you're not going to enjoy it. Have I answered the question? No. No, it, it 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 it's one of these is that is that um, Roy Chubby Brown. It's only a certain section of the community enjoy his comedy, and when we talk about comedy, it's about relating. Sometimes yeah. your observation comes about relating. How you know your your material to people who are listening to it. And they say, oh, but yeah. that's why you laugh sometimes. Oh, that, you think, oh, that's true. That yeah, that, I me. get, I get that. Yeah. yeah, because it's like you you, you push open doors. Yeah, so when you when you when you're Roy Chubby Brown or Jim Davidson and you're telling a racist joke or something that's deemed racist, some people are for, no, I don't like that. Some people are, oh, yeah. that's no, oh, yeah. oh, that, so that's true. He's a, he's a, he's that. He's saying that person is that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. Yeah, so, I. I think Roy Chubby Brown is is a nicer person than Jim Davidson. I have no idea what I base that on. <laughs> Apart from I think Jim Davidson is a twat and a third. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I I worked with uh, Keith Harris uh, in Butlins years and years ago, and Roy Chubby Brown had released a song called Orville the Duck. Orville the Duck. Orville the Duck. And Keith Harris played it to us on a cassette tape. If those of you don't know what a cassette tape is, look it up. And, and me and Keith Harris, right, we're like this, best buds, uh, we're laughing at Roy Chubby Brown's bit. And, he's, and Roy Chubby Brown is, is taking the piss out of Orville, saying, I wish I could fly right up to the sky, but I fucking can't. Right? And it was funny. It was funny. And Keith Harris is laughing. He said, I should sue him. I should sue him. But it would give him more publicity if I sued him. He's called Keith. Keith Harris. That's it on his hand and he's got his fingers. Right up my fucking ass. Keith said I farted yesterday. I said I didn't. He said you did. I don't know what it says. I don't know what that says. <laughs> but yes, it's a just, it's a funny this, song. This is this is this is no slant on him. I just thought it'd be, it'd be funny the way it, if it happened like that. Saying, hey, "Hey, these jokes about these Indians and black people, I ain't got a problem with that." But you can't say nothing about my green bird. <laughs> yeah, you can't say nothing. <laughs> 
<sighs> but is is I don't know if if is, is Roy Chibri Brown racist? I think he's homophobic. I don't. I, I, but I don't, don't know. know. You don't I know. heard a story once which I find hilarious, and uh, apparently Roy Chibri Brown was 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 playing in in some for, um, form of church hall type situation. Uh. I don't know where it was, and I don't know if it's a made-up story or it's true, but they had their video recorder. This is how old this joke, this thing happened. They had a video recorder stolen from the church, and he comes in and the, he looks up, and there's a there's a there's a there's a cross with Jesus Christ struck out like that, and he goes, "Oh, I see you got the bugger who stole your video player." <laughs> see, but I do think I do think uh, Royston Vasey has very good timing, but I, I've never seen him live. And I, I, and I would like to see him live, but I don't think I'd enjoy the audience. <laughs> I think That's uh, the thing. Yeah, we, we just talked about it. We know the type of audience that go watch him. Have you seen like, Paul Smith from the, the Hot Water? Yes. Is it Paul yeah. Smith? Yeah. I went to see him at, at the Palace Theatre, and like they were a bad audience. They were nasty. They were nasty. They weren't, they weren't they weren't they weren't pleasant people i had to tell one of them to fucking shut up and like he was he was having a go at the, the one of the usherettes as well and i said take it don't do it here mate that was but i, I don't know whether they just because they saw him on the youtube or something i don't know what it is but but they had no right to be in a comedy gig they were just not are you saying all the people that turned up were just no, in this row that I was sitting yeah. in, they were just pissed. Well, I think they got absolutely pissed as well. But they weren't the right people. They weren't the normal people that come to a gig at the Palace Theatre. But I think that's because Paul Smith is huge on video, on YouTube or something. He's YouTube. more of a uh, an internet success rather than a TV success. So, I don't know. I don't know if that answers your problem with uh, what's right and what's wrong and, and, and where does humour become. Or, do, or do we just say you can make fun of anything? It don't matter. There's, there's no, there's no comebacks here. Yeah, but then, oh. see, the beautiful thing about comedy is that you can shock, you can take people down a path and then shock them, and it makes them laugh, and that's a good thing. But it depends where your shock and your hurt is. If you're shocking, because it's part, if you, if. You, if you weave a tapestry beautifully, at the end of the day, it's going to look perfect. But if you drop a stitch now and again, it's going to look shit. There you go. That's your answer. Not quite sure what that means. I'm saying if you're good at your craft, then you yeah. should be able to tell most jokes without upsetting your audience. Well, I'm, I need to retire this. <laughs> <laughs> 